there's a time. Oh, that's what I was saying. I don't even know if I finished my sentence. Damn. Did I finish my sentence? Man, I don't even know. Why are these spam numbers calling me? Like, I'm trying to film so I can go eat. Jesus. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me again. Before we jump into this video, I'm going to shamelessly plug my social media. So, please take two seconds to go ahead and follow me on my Instagram. I have two Instagram accounts. The first one's our personal page, at Monique Travell. That one you can find all of my regular day-to-day. -day. I post what I'm put I post when I post YouTube videos, um, pictures, all that stuff. And then I also have a pregnancy Instagram channel, which is at the Mom Apprentice. So go ahead and follow that too to stay updated with my pregnancy journey. So before we jump into this video, I do want to make a disclaimer because I did notice as I was looking through the symptoms that I have listed on my phone that a lot of them are negative just because when you hear the word symptoms, your mind automatically goes to the cons as opposed to the pros. So my disclaimer is just letting you guys know that my second trimester for me was so much better than my first trimester. And a lot of people say that does happen, that is the case, but pregnancy is so wishy-washy. My second trimester was so much better simply because the fact that I felt like myself again, like I literally felt human again like I didn't mind interacting with people I didn't mind getting out of bed in the morning I loved waking up in the morning I like had just so much more energy not even just physically but mentally because energy is like a mental state as well I felt so much better like I was happy my mood was right like don't get me wrong I did have my mood swings but for the most part like I was in a so much better mood than I was my first trimester and it was amazing it was beautiful and I still do feel that way but I'm only two weeks into the third trimester so catch me in about 11 more weeks after the baby gets here and we'll see how the third trimester concludes but for now the first two weeks they're great they're great so now let's jump into these symptoms the first one I'm going to talk about is pregnancy brain being real. Like, pregnancy brain is so real. Don't let anybody tell you it's not real. Like, I could not remember anything. Even in the first trimester, I experienced some pregnancy brain. But I feel like in the second trimester, it was way worse. Like, I would literally, like, you know how you walk into a room and you completely forget what you came in there for? Like, that's all day literally all day for me at least it was all day some days are better than other days but for the most part like I couldn't remember anything I would stop mid-sentence like two weeks ago I washed my laundry on Wednesday right I washed one load right on Wednesday and my dryer's broke right now so I have my clothes air drying and my mom was like walking through the hallway and she's like oh how did you She's like, oh, we have laundry detergent. I want to wash some clothes. And I'm like, no, Ma, you said you left laundry detergent at Uncle Basil's house. And she's like, oh, so how'd you wash your clothes? And I'm like, sis, I don't know. Like, I guess I just used water. But this is literally like two days later. Like, well, maybe like a day later. Like a day later, like a whole 24 hours after the fact that I already washed my clothes. These clothes are already dry. Like, I'm about to put them away. And my mom's like, so how do you wash your clothes? And I'm like, bitch, I guess I used water. Like, crazy. I didn't even think, like, at all. Like, what was I doing? Like, no laundry detergent? Like, I've never done that in my life. Like, another thing that I'm experiencing a lot of is heartburn and acid reflux. So, they say, old wise tell, they say, if you experience heartburn or acid reflux during your pregnancy that your baby's gonna come out with a head full of hair I came out with a head full of hair and so did my boyfriend he also came out with a head full of hair so um you know we're gonna we're gonna chalk this wise tell up to being accurate so far we'll see in June but the type of acid reflux that I've had when I was pregnant while I've been pregnant in my second trimester was crazy there was one time where I literally like I could not even I 
couldn't like lay down in the bed. I'm trying to go to sleep. I can't have to sleep sitting up because every time I laid down, it literally felt like there was like a golf ball sized substance trying to come back up in my throat. It was so painful. Like it was only one time where it was that painful to the fact where I wanted to cry. That's how painful it was. And it lasts a while. Like it lasts like at least an hour. But oh. Oh my god, it was so bad. The other times weren't as bad, but I definitely did have acid reflux after eating certain foods. So, like, definitely can't do spicy foods, um, which you want to stay away from anyway when you're pregnant, but definitely can't do spicy foods. But Tums does seem to help me a lot, so if I know I'm going to eat something like sushi, I only eat cooked sushi, by the way. Every time I say that I'm about to go get some sushi, somebody's like don't you aren't you not supposed to be eating sushi i don't eat raw sushi never ate raw sushi okay i eat shrimp tempura that's it my shrimp tempura roll with some extra fried rice on the side that's all i eat okay so pump your brakes right there pump it pump it if i'm gonna eat some sushi or something that i know triggers my acid reflux that i can eat i'll eat a tom's before I eat it so that's why my acid reflux not as bad. Okay, another symptom that I experienced in my second trimester, which is probably the most annoying symptom that I have experienced so far, is numbness in my hips and leg cramps while I'm sleeping. It is so annoying. I asked my doctor about it because I was thinking, like someone told me maybe it would be like low magnesium or low potassium or something like that, so I brought it up to my doctor. I knew leg cramps were a thing, but like the hip numbness, I was like, what is that? This is annoying. She said pretty much it's, it's something to do with like the blood vessels are like restricted or contracting or something like that, or like something's laying on blood vessels when you're pregnant. I don't know, whatever the case may be, but that happens to me every night. I kind of found a way to eliminate it a little bit with the way I position my pillows and my, my pillow, like my actual head pillows and my body pillow. Like I can't sleep without my body pillow at all. First of all, let's start there. I cannot sleep without my body pillow. If not, like I literally, I'm waking up every hour tossing and turning because my I wake up, I'm waking up with leg cramps and my hips being numb. It's ugh, so annoying. Comment down below if this happened to you while you're pregnant. It's, it's annoying. It's painful. I'm trying to sleep. I can't sleep because my hips are numb and my legs are cramping and I'm tossing and turning every hour. It don't work. Okay, so now we're going to get into cravings. So for the longest time, people ask me, maybe up until about like 25, 26 weeks, like what are you craving? And like I didn't have any crazy cravings. Like I've always loved potatoes and pancakes. Like those were my things. I can say more so like maybe to war no it was definitely the second trimester like my love for those two things increased crazy like I would make pancakes every day every day every day like the maybe the end of my first trimester beginning of my second trimester I went through like three boxes of pancakes like it was crazy like I was making pancakes every morning every single morning and like I never ate pancakes that much but I didn't think I didn't really consider pancakes or potatoes a craving because it was something that I always loved I just wanted it more I can say like one official craving that I did have was eggs because before I was pregnant I hated eggs hated eggs and as soon as I was pregnant like I wanted eggs all the Time. Like, I made boiled eggs, scrambled eggs, egg sandwiches, egg with spinach. Like, I want eggs all the time. It's like slowing down a little bit. But I can definitely say my cravings fluctuate. Like, now I'm like obsessed with cereal. Like, yeah, I kid you not, I have five boxes of cereal downstairs. I have three boxes of Captain Crunch Berries. I have one box of Fruity Pebbles. And then my mom picked up a box of Honey Nut Cheerios. I guess she wanted me to have something. So, um, something a little bit more healthy oh no I actually have six because I also have lucky charms downstairs too like craziness I want cereal all the time and I also this is why you have to follow my mama my mama princess page because I'll be letting y'all know like what I'm feeling that day and today I posted lucky charms and fruity pebbles mixed 
mind blown. Or Fruity Pebbles and Captain Crunch Berries mixed. Nah, bruh. Crazy game changer. Try it. It is amazing. Probably not the healthiest, but oh my god, amazing. I eat it like every day now. I also went through a short time of like wanting Pop Tarts. That was very like short lived. It only lasts like one week. But it was real because I went downstairs to get my Pop Tarts one day and on my box of Pop Tarts was my name. Because in my household, you have to label things that you really, really want and you really, really like. Because if not, you'll put it in there. You'll pay for it. You'll pay for it. You'll put it in the cabinet and then you go downstairs two days later and the whole box is gone but still sitting in the cabinet. And that's what happened to me and my Pop-Tarts and I literally almost had a breakdown. No, I think I would, I would consider it a breakdown. I had a whole meltdown over some damn Pop-Tarts and that was the end of my Pop-Tart craving. I was so disgusted, didn't want Pop-Tarts no more. It's crazy. They like literally, they just change. They change week by week, day by day, doesn't matter. You never know what your next craving is going to be. It's absolutely crazy. Okay, so something else I've been experiencing, which is also another positive one during my pregnancy, is baby cakes. So I started, I think I want to say I got my first kick around 18 weeks. There was one time before that where I felt like a little like weird, like like maybe like a wave or something like that or like a little flutter it was like very quick like two seconds and then it was gone and never happened again so I wasn't sure if that was like movement or not at 18 weeks is when I first knew like I said it was an actual kick because it was more like a twitch like it felt like my muscle was twitching I couldn't really like see it too much but I would feel it if I like put my hand on my belly I could definitely feel it um but it literally felt like little muscle spasms, but not painful, just like muscle twitching or spasms or something like that. And then it got to the point where I could feel her like literally trying to protrude out of my stomach. Like you could see her like pushing out. So it was definitely very different stages. Um, but definitely like a beautiful, wonderful feeling. Yeah, I'm getting hot. Oh God, I forgot to put hot flashes. Mm. So now since... You know, I just experienced a hot flash. Well, let's talk about hot flashes. Like that is something that I've been experiencing more and more in my second trimester. I feel like an old lady always having like a random hot flash. I've like, like I was getting a facial one time and I had to like rip the blanket off. Like my esthetician took my socks off. Like I was going crazy, like absolutely crazy. And it's like so out of nowhere and so fast. So when my mom was having hot flashes when she was menopausing, I was like, girl, you being dramatic. It is December. It is 15 degrees outside. You better roll that window up. It is cold outside. There is snow on the ground, okay? Roll the window up. But I get it. I completely get it now because hot flashes are 0 to 100. 0 to 100. You're literally okay. Like, I was just okay right now. And I was starting to go crazy like you feel hot then you start feeling weak and like clammy and you're sweating and it's just nasty you just need water you literally just want to like down all the water all the water you just want it all i also experienced more crying spells <laughs> like if Okay, anybody that knows me knows that I have to love you an immense amount, an immense amount, and care for you so deeply that if something that you do affects me to make me cry. Like, there's a limited amount of people that can make me cry. I literally cry for everything. Not, not for everything, that's dramatic, but I cry way more often than I ever did in my life. Like there are times where I'm just sitting and doing something and I'm like, yo, why is this making me cry? Like, why do I wanna cry right now? Like, it makes no sense. And you, and I literally know, like, girl, you're being crazy. Like, why are you about to cry right now? This is not even that serious. Like, I'm a very emotional person, but like Cardi says, I'm an emotional gangster. 
So I don't show it at all. If I'm emotional, I'm keeping it inside. Because like I said, I'm a Gemini. So I have a complete opposite sides of the spectrum. But I never show it. I never cry. And being that I've been crying more often, like, really makes me think I'm going crazy. Because I don't cry. I can't stress this enough. I think I've stressed it enough. I think I get the point. I do not cry. The last thing I also experience is back pain. My back kills me. And my belly is not even big. And my back kills me. So I can only imagine what women with bigger bellies experience with their back pains. But I experience crazy back pains like in my lower back. And then also like always like even right now like in this area here like kind of on my ribs I'll get like pain there and it's like a dull like achy sometimes sharp pain and it's just so uncomfortable my doctor did say that my back pains could be because of my posture and especially like that rib area here because I do kind of lean this way so it could be that and I sit all day now that I'm a manager I'm like constantly sitting at a desk so being like slouched over like a lot of she said a lot of pregnant women like rest their boobs on their belly which I notice I do a lot so just like fixing my posture and making sure like my shoulder blades are back and stuff like that can help um but she says also probably why I do experience like at least that side pain the back pain is just something that's inevitable inevitable with some pregnancies and of course I was lucky enough to you know get that so it's great it's fun fun time all right, y'all, I gotta go. I'm hungry, I'm gonna go eat a bagel. So, I'm out of here, but yes, that was everything that I experienced during my second trimester. Um, if you experienced anything that I did and it was crazy for you or something I didn't experience, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will greatly appreciate it, and so will you with the rest of the videos that I'm going to be posting. It's going to be a fun time, so just why not party with Mo, you know? If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, and also make sure you go check out my last video on my first trimester symptoms. But that's it. I'm out of here. Got to go feed this baby. Mwah. Love you all. Until next time, peace out.